Since the third week of September, we have been making our way through the beginning of Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. It is in this foundational sermon that Jesus, in the only way that he can as a master teacher, leads us through all those foundational thoughts and principles of life and living. To hear the Beatitudes is to get the idea that kingdom principles are different than mankind's principles. In fact, I would say that everything that mankind thinks is right is actually wrong because kingdom principles are opposite of mankind's principles and kingdom principles always trump the principles of mankind. After speaking about his followers being persecuted and reviled, Jesus begins to unpack some things. He says this, you are the salt of the earth. Frequently in the South, I've heard that term used, salt of the earth. Oh, John, oh, Jim, oh, James is just a salt of the earth type of person. Heard it not long ago, in fact. But what does that mean? I think it goes back to Jesus, and it seems to me that Jesus had several meanings for it, and it all centers around the everyday use of this thing we call salt. Certainly, the first thing that comes to our mind is taste or flavor. We use salt to flavor or taste our vegetables, our meats, our, I mean, just about everything we eat. In fact, without salt, our, most of our foods taste bland. Now, this time paints a great picture of life for us. Jesus was saying to those who follow him, love him, and serve him that it is you who give taste to this culture. Without the truth of the kingdom of God being lived out in this culture day by day, the culture becomes bland and tasteless and has little appeal. Now, if time permitted, this is one of our huge issues of the day. We need more people who are Jesus' salt of the earth so that we can return the taste to our culture. The next thing which comes to my mind is this thing of preservation. I live in the South. I live in the county in which I was born, Marion County. And I remember my kinfolks having salt houses. It's a very fresh memory in my mind. It, it was probably before refrigerators became the big deal and maybe even before electricity arrived in rural South Mississippi. But they would have this house where they would hang their meat and they would preserve their meat by packing them in salt and they would store them until they needed to use them. And the meat was always soft, salty and it all, always tasted very good. You see, Christ wants us to be the one to preserve the good and godliness in our culture. After all, if those who are redeemed don't do it, who will? The third thing that comes to my mind is this thing of healing. Salt has long been known as a healing agent because it promotes healing. Of all the things America and the world needs today, Healing is at the top of the list. Christ is the great physician and his people, that'd be you and me, are sent as healing agents in the world. No, we not, may not be the supernatural divine healer, but we are, or better said, we can be the medicine which promotes the healing that this culture so desperately needs. In the final analysis, being the salt of the earth means staying spiritually connected to our Lord. Now, even as the redeemed, we can choose to break our fellowship with him. We can lose our influence in the world and we can become like the salt which has lost its flavor and savor and impact. When we choose to sin and disrupt our relationship and our fellowship with Christ, we can become like the salt that has lost its taste. We may not lose our salvation, but we can lose our ability to be what Christ designed us to be and what he saved us to be. 
In the physical world of salt, when a salt loses its, its impact, it's used for pavement on a road underfoot. Thankfully, in the spiritual realm, Jesus offers us a way to be restored. John tells us, if you confess your sin, and confession means that you agree with Jesus that you have actually sinned, then Jesus is faithful and just to forgive your sin. Why? Because he paid the price for your sin on the cross. Here's the deal. When you repent or turn away from your sin with godly sorrow, he will forgive your sin and he will restore you to salt status. My friends, Jesus said, you are the salt of the earth. And he wants you and me to help this land. Help them with healing. Help them with preserving his crown creation. And oh, along the way, we can add a little godly flavor to this place where we live. But just never forget, it begins and it ends with Jesus. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word, how it speaks to our heart. I pray for any person who is listening today, I pray that you will speak into them a reminder that they are indeed salt of the earth if they're yours. And if someone's listening who is not part of your family, I pray that today that you'll speak into them and draw them to yourself. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. I pray you have a wonderful day. Thank you.